Do you know what a syllogism is? For about the last 2,000 years in Western civilization, the syllogism has been the basic reasoning technology on which all of our arts and sciences rest. It's a startling fact. Aristotle was the first one to formulate the structure of the syllogism as we know it today. In his work, Prior Analytics, Aristotle defines the syllogism as discourse in which, certain things being stated, something other than what is stated, follows of necessity from their being so. I mean by the last phrase that they produce the consequence, and by this no further term is required from without in order to make the consequence necessary. It's a pretty specific and precise definition. Now in mathematics, we're all familiar with the concept that two things that are equal to a common third thing are also equal to each other. Take the combination of numbers 14 plus 1 equals 15. But it is also the case that another combination, let's say 9 plus 6, also equals 15. So if that is the case, that each of those sets or combinations equals 15, then in this sense, both of those sets are equal to each other. Now in English language, that translates into something like this. All mammals are creatures that breastfeed their young. All dogs are mammals. Therefore, all dogs are creatures that breastfeed their young. You can see how two things equal to a common third are also equal to each other. This is the very structure and the law of syllogistic reasoning. Now, in any categorical syllogism, which is what we are studying in critical thinking, there are only three categorical propositions. Two of them are called premises, and the third, the one that follows necessarily, according to Aristotle, is called the conclusion. In any categorical syllogism, there are only three categorical terms. The major term, the minor term, and the what I call magic middle term. That's the term that joins the major to the minor. The major premise relates or joins the major term to the middle term. The minor premise relates the minor term to the middle term. And when this relation results in what Aristotle calls a necessary inference from these two premises, then the conclusion is validly deduced from these premises. Remember that we're talking about deduction here, not induction. Inductive reasoning allows us to discover what principles are. Deduction allows us to apply what principles are. And the strange thing about validity in deductive arguments is it's a strict either-or situation. Either a deductive argument is valid or it is not. There's no middle ground. It's like pregnancy. You're either pregnant or you're not pregnant. Same thing with logical validity of deductive arguments. In any standard form categorical syllogism, there are only three standard form categorical propositions. And you already know what those propositions could be. Could be A, E, I, or O in any combination of three. Now each term is used exactly twice in exactly the same manner. The major term, the minor term, and the middle term. Take a silly syllogistic example, which I have in my textbook. All light bulbs are human. That's premise number one. All Bostonians are light bulbs. That's premise number two. Strangely enough, even though these premises are false, and we know them to be false from inductive reasoning, nevertheless, this is a valid argument. And it yields up the conclusion, therefore, all Bostonians are human. Hmm. The major term, always the predicate of the conclusion in an argument, syllogistically, is human in this case. The minor term, which is always the subject of the conclusion, in this case, is the term Bostonians. And the middle term, always used twice in the premises, since they're related to both the major and the minor, 
never appears in the conclusion, in this case, is light bulbs. Hmm. Now, we know from experience, i.e. inductive reasoning, that the two premises are not true. <laughs> Nevertheless, the argument is valid. This is the most important thing you will ever learn about logic. Logic does not care, strictly speaking, about the truth or the falsity of premises. It only cares about whether or not, if the premises are true, would the conclusion have to be true? So when you confront any syllogism, that's the only question you really need to ask. If the premises were true, would the conclusion have to be true by logical necessity? And the reason why logical necessity and logical validity work is the concept called distribution. When the major term and the minor term are properly distributed through the middle term, that is what we mean by syllogistic reasoning of validity. That's the little gutty what that makes syllogisms work.